This is section 6.5 on logistic growth, the logistic differential equation. Now consider the case of a population P with a growth curve as a function of time that begins increasing and concave up as an exponential growth, then turns increasing and concave down as it approaches the carrying capacity of its habitat, a logistic curve, like the one shown in figure 6.13, has the shape to model this growth. We have seen that the exponential growth at the beginning can be modeled by a differential equation. So this equation uh, turns into y equals y naught e to the kt. And an exponential growth function graphs like this. So that over time, the population just keeps increasing, 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 and the population will reach infinity. Uh, but that isn't really realistic for uh, a given habitat. So if you throw a fish into a little bowl, uh, the exponential growth function would say that, well, in 100 days, you're going to have like 50 million fish. Well, that's, that's not possible because the bowl only, can only hold so many fish. It can only support so many fish with the oxygen, with the food, uh, with, with just space provided. So exponential growth isn't really realistic when you're dealing with nature. If we want the growth rate to approach zero as P approaches a maximal carrying capacity, in other words, when you have a bowl full of fish, once you reach, let's say, 20 fish, uh, there's, they're not going to grow anymore. They're, the population's going to be stagnant because there's just not enough room. Fish are going to start dying out. So there's a carrying capacity for a fish bowl, for a forest, for a lake, uh, for, for any kind of habitat you could think of. Well, we can in introduce a limiting factor of m minus p, where m is the carrying capacity. So let's say our bowl can carry 20 fish. Let's say the population is 1. So we have 20 minus 1, so 19 is going to be a factor of the growth. So you take uh, some k times the population times 19. So it's going to grow really fast right away. But, but not real fast, because this is only times 1. Well, as the population grows, let's say you have 20 minus 15 fish. Well, now one of your factors is only 5. So it's going to start slowing down. Well, let's say that it's 20. Well, now your growth rate has a factor of 0, and it's not growing anymore because, well, the growth is now 0. 0 times anything is 0. But that's what we want. We want the growth to be zero when the habitat has reached its maximum capacity. This is the logistic differential equation. Before we find its general solution, let us see how much we can learn about the logistic growth just by studying the differential equation itself. So we're going to look at this equation right here and see what kind of information we can come up with. In example four, the growth rate of a population P of bears in a newly established wildlife preserve is modeled by the differential equation d of dp over dt equals, well, k is 0.008p, and the carrying capacity is 100, where t is measured in years. What is the carrying capacity for bears in this wildlife preserve? Well, it's 100. Well, this is the rate at which it's changing, which the population is changing, but the function graphs like this. We start out with an initial value, the rate at which it's uh, growing is slow, but then the rate gets faster and faster and faster, and then the population eventually levels out to the carrying capacity. So this is 100 right here. Now the slope of the tangent line is the rate at which the population is changing, and it'll be the fastest, the rate will be the fastest when the population is half of the carrying capacity. So this answer is 50. What is the rate of change of the population when it is growing the fastest? So dp is growing the fastest when p is 50. So we have 0 0.008 times 50 times, well, 100 minus 50 is 50. Let's grab our calculator, and we'll find out how fast the population is growing. So we have 0 0.008 times 50 squared, which is 20. So when the population is growing the fastest, uh, the rate is growing by 20 bears per year. In example five, it says, in 1985 and 1987, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources airlifted 61 moose from Algonquin Park, Ontario, to Marquette County in the Upper Peninsula. 
It was originally hoped that the population P would reach a carrying capacity in about 25 years with a growth rate of the following function. So they're thinking the maximum population is going to be 1,000 for this area. A, according to the model, what is the carrying capacity? Well, it's 1,000. B, with a calculator generate a slope field? We're not going to do that. C, solve the differential equation with the initial condition of P of 0, 61, and show that it conforms to the slope field. So we're going to solve the differential equation. All right, so we're going to go down to here. It says, after separating the variables, we encounter an antiderivative to be found using partial fractions. So we're going to use partial fractions here. And what, what they've done is multiplied both sides by dt. So we have 0 0.0003 times 1,000 minus p. And I need a p in there. dt. Then they've separated the variables, so brought the p's over with the dp. So we have uh, p times 1,000 minus p equals just 0 .0003, 0 0003 dt. And that's where we pick up this right here. Well, they've integrated both sides, and we're going to use partial fractions. So they've split the denominator into p and 1,000 minus p. Well, this is going to equal 1, and that the, that's what they've done here with common denominator. So multiplied a times 1,000 minus p multiplied b times p. Well, if you let p equals 0, for that to eliminate b, you get 1,000a equals 1. So 1 over 1,000 is 0 .001. When you let p equal 1,000 to make this 0, you get 1,000p equals 1, and so b equals uh, 1 over 1,000 again. So both a and the b equal 0 .001. And if we integrate this, we get natural logs. And remember the pesky little negative sign down here. So the antiderivative is a negative. Antiderivative of 0.3 is 0.3t, but then plus c. Well, you need to multiply everybody by a negative. That's not an obvious step, because we want the p to be the denominator when we combine the two natural logs. So that makes it negative 0.3 and then minus c. Well, then this step right here, we have 1,000 minus p over p is equal to e to the negative 0.3t minus c. And that's where they get this piece right here, except they've made it 1,000 over p, and p over p is 1. Well, they've added 1 to this side, and that's what they get right here. And they've split this into multiplication right there. Well, they use the initial condition with 61, so p is 61. Uh, when t is 0. So e to the negative c ends up being, with a calculator, 15.393. That's what this piece is right here. And then they've just put that in the front as a coefficient. So there's 15.393 as a coefficient. Then these two things trade places. So this is the logistic function right here. The general logistic formula. The solution of the general logistic differential equation, the solution for this is that where m is the carrying capacity. m goes there, and m goes right there also, but times k. And of course, you see the negative right here. a is found by using the initial condition. So you need an appropriate initial condition to determine what a is. In exercise 23 through 26, we're going to use these instructions. So here is the differential equation for number 24. So letter a asks, the carrying capacity of the population. Well, that's 700. Letter B, the size of the population when it is growing the fastest. Well, that's 350, half of the carrying capacity. And letter C, it says the rate at which the population is growing when it's growing the fastest. So we need to plug in 350 into this equation. So dp, dt, the rate at which the population is growing is 0 .0008 times 350 times 700 minus 350, which is 350 also. Uh, let's grab our calculator and let's get that answer. So 0.000, whoop, turn it on, 0 0.0008 times 350 squared, 98. So letter C, the answer is 98 fish per minute, fish per year cells per second, whatever the label would be for this. 
in exercise 27 through 30, solve the initial value problem using partial fractions. Use a graphing utility. We're not going to generate this slope field. We're not going to do that. Well, we need to separate the variables. So dp equals 0.0008p times 700 minus p dt. And well, that's separating the differentials. Now we need to, need to separate the variables. So we have 1 over p times 700 minus p equals 0 0.0008 dt. And I need the dp over here. Integrate both sides. Away we go. And we're going to use uh, partial fractions to do this. So I need to make this into a times, if I put a over p, I'll need a times 700 minus p and b times p. So if we let p equal 700, we get 700b equals 1, so b equals 1 over 700. If we let p equal 0, then this is going to be 700, so a equals 1 over 700 as well. We're going to make this integral into 1 over 700 over p plus 1 over 700 over 700 minus p. And that's equal to 0 0.0008t plus c. And I need dp here. Well, the integral of this one is 1 over 700 times the natural log of the absolute value of p plus 1 over 700, actually not plus. I've got to be careful with that pesky little negative sign there, right there. So it's actually minus 1 over 700, natural log of the absolute value of 700 minus p, equal to 0.0008t plus c. Well, how about we multiply everybody by 700? So we have natural log absolute value of p minus natural log absolute value of 700 minus p is equal to, I need a calculator for this part, 0 0.0008 times 700, which is 0.56. plus c. Well, when I do the division, I really want the p to be the denominator. I don't want the denominator to be 700 minus p, so we're going to multiply everybody by a negative. So that gives us natural log of the absolute value of 700 minus p over p, because multiplying by negative is going to change, is going to flip-flop these. That's equal to negative 0.56 minus c. Well, now we have 700 minus p over p equals e to the negative 0.56. Uh, I lost the t here. Where did I lose the t? Right there. t, t, t minus c. We have 700 over p minus 1 equals e to the negative 0.56t minus c. So we need to add 1 over. So we have 700 over p equals 1 plus e to the negative 0.56t minus c. And here's where we're going to plug in the initial condition to find out what c is. Oh, actually not. I think I want to separate this first. I think I want to turn it into 700 over p equals 1 plus e to the negative 0.56t times e to the negative c. I don't think, it may not have even mattered. Uh, actually, it does. I, I want this e to the negative c. Well, p is 10, I believe, when t is 0. So we have 700 over 10. Let's double check that. Yep, p is 10 when t is 0. Equal to 1 plus e to the 0 times e to the negative c. Well, that's 1. So we have 69, no, not 69, I, I was thinking ahead. 70 equals 1 plus e to the negative c, so we minus 1. e to the negative c equals 
nine. So now we need to go back up to where? Back up to, the, how about this spot right there? We have 700 over P equals one plus E to the negative 0.56 T, but times 69. I should have wrote it out in front rather than behind. So 69 E to the negative 0.56 T. Well, these two just trade spots, so P equals 700 over 1 plus 69 E to the negative 0.56 T, and there we have it.